there's a pretty one, Ulysses. There it is. Hello, Booktube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. I'm here with a review today, and this is a review of a Norwegian novel called Love. And the author is Hanne Orstavik. It was originally published in 1997 in Norway, and the English translation is being published this month, February 2018. The translation is by Martin Aitken, and it's published by Archipelago Books. I received a galley of this book through NetGalley in exchange for an honest review. My honest review shall start thusly. I loved this book. This was a five-star read for me, and I'm very happy to tell you why. It's a short little novel, and it's about a single mother named Vibeka and her eight-year-old son, John, who will turn nine years old the following day. And there isn't a whole lot of plot here, but that's the plot. They have recently moved to a new small town in Norway. Vibeka has started a new job that she's quite stoked about, and John is, of course, starting out in a new school and just starting to make friends. The writing, the translation, I'm pretty tough on translated works because I find that most translations are not up to par, unless it's somebody like a uh, Elena Ferrante or a Dostoevsky or whoever, where the publisher can afford to hire a decent translator. So I am delighted to tell you that Martin Aitken has done a masterful job of translating this, not that I've compared it to the Norwegian, but the prose is luscious. I'm going to read you a longer quote, but let me just set it up. John and his mother, Vibeka, are like two ships passing in the night. They live together. She takes care of his basic needs, but she is in her own little world, stuck in her head, dreaming of finding a man, constantly thinking about work, her eyes glazed over, and is barely aware of John's presence in the room, much of the time, never mind John's presence in the house, and that's a key part of the story. So John wanders in and out of the house. She thinks he's at home, he's not at home. She thinks he's out, he's at home. She's not paying a lot of attention to her son, and that ends up being heartbreaking. At this point in the story, he has wandered off, and he has met up with a couple girls from his school. They're several years older than him, or at least the one girl is, and she invites him to her house, and he goes. But everything, whenever either John or his mom, Vibeka, meet a new stranger, there's something really ominous. And the characters don't feel scared, usually, but the reader, there's something in the way that Orstovic tells this story that I was always on the edge of my seat, kind of in a thrillery way. Is this a safe person? Is something bad going to happen? What's going on here? The prose is really hypnotic. I love the writing. Here is a passage where John and the girl are just entering her house. Oh, and John has some medical condition or some tick where he is always blinking, and it's a problem, and he's trying to control it. So that's mentioned here. The house smells of firewood burning in a wood burner. A dry smell. They go up the stairs. There are some doors leading off the landing. She opens one, switches the big light on, and lets him go in first. It looks like she shares with someone else. There are two beds. The window is straight in front, facing the forest to the rear of the house. He goes up to it. A pair of patterned curtains hang down at each side. He looks out. He sees how the light from the windows of the house extends towards the trees. He thinks the dark tree trunks in the white snow are like lines of charcoal on a piece of paper. The further away they are, the closer together they seem. Eventually, they recede into black. She asks why he keeps doing that with his eyes all the time. John says he doesn't know. He turns toward her. He says he tries not to, but he can't help it. The girl blinks a few times. It's tiring, she says. I don't think about it says John. My aunt's got a glass eye, says the girl. She kept looking through keyholes when she was little, only one day my dad was on the other side. He stuck a screwdriver through the hole to stop her spying. Feel like a game of Othello? 
Before he can say anything, she gets the box out from under one of the beds. They sit on the floor with the board and all the black and white counters in the middle. Okay, one of the things that was also really fascinating about the way this book was written is that the narrative flips from the consciousness of Rebecca and John, and it just goes back and forth and there is often some kind of a residual energy or phrase or theme that makes it almost difficult to realize where one point of view leaves off and the other begins. And I love that. And that knit the narrative together in a really powerful way for me. They both end up going out into the night, meeting up with people, and we, the readers, are not sure, are, are these safe people? Is something bad going to happen? And it gets really ominous. And ultimately, this is a story about trust and neglect. I absolutely love the writing, and that's saying a lot, because I don't often respond that way to translated fiction. And I recommend this novel heartily to you. Love by Hane Orstevik. Thanks for watching.